All right, guys, welcome back. As me and Mr. Tyler told you last time, we are uh, maps are a big part of every unit moving forward. And um, you just finished vocabulary for the new unit. Can you believe it? We have finished an entire unit over prehistory, and we are ready now to go forward with uh, River Valley civilizations. So we're going to look at three interactive maps. I'm going to walk you through them. Uh, for first the Fertile Crescent, then a little bit bigger with Mesopotamia, then even bigger with Ancient Egypt. Then I'm going to show you um, your interactive um, fill-in-the-blank map for um, this unit, and then I'm going to um, let give you your assignment to complete. And on Friday of this week, you will have some comprehension questions over this map. So let's start with this first. Um, let's start small and get um, larger with each map. So the Fertile Crescent, you see here, it's um, based around Mesopotamia, called the land between the rivers of Tigris and Euphrates. And as civilization developed around rich farmland, you're going to notice every civilization moving forward, they started to um, go where the water was and the rich farmland, and the Fertile Crescent, the kings of Sumerian city-states, they would fight over this rich farmland. And you see here, um, Sargon of Akkad united all of Mesopotamia in the world's first empire. And this was um, stretched from the Mediterranean Sea to the Persian Gulf. So all the way from Mediterranean through down to the Persian Gulf. And you see all these city-states. The Akkadian Empire was eventually replaced by a new empire with its capital at Babylon. This Babylonian empire um, expanded rapidly under the rule of King Hammurabi. We will spend a lot of time on Hammurabi and Hammurabi's code, who created this imp important set of laws to help govern his empire. So Babylon, an extremely important part of um, history. So that is the Fertile Crescent. This land all around, you see the green is all part of the Fertile Crescent and even goes over to the um, western part um, in, around the Nile. So let's go now and expand a little bit, um, a little bit larger with Mesopotamia. So you see here um, the flowing of the Tigris and Euphrates in a region called um, the land between the rivers. So all of the land between the Tigris and Euphrates. So rain and melting snow in the mountains caused the rivers to swell almost every year and it would flood and whenever you get this flooding, you would have this um, silt um, that would come up um, from the flooding and it would carry downstream, down the stream. And so the silt, it would deposit onto the floodplain and that the banks of these rivers, the, it would be very fertile, which meant that there would be a lot of crops, which meant the people would go here and they would um, they would they would live here because that was where they could grow the most food. And so because there was so much food that could be grown there, they didn't have to search for food and they could settle there and they could grow their villages. They could have communities and they would have cities with complex structures. And these were the first cities, um, the world's first civilization there in Sumer and a region in southern Mesopotamia was formed in Sumer. So Sum, um, Sumerian cities became known as city-states, which we'll go into in this unit. And they were um, there were at least 12 that we know of that were all at the mouth of the Tigris and Euphrates. So some of them were Kish, Nippur, Eridu, Ur, Lagash, and Uma were um, some of the bigger ones. So Sumerian civilization included inventions such as wheeled chariots, the first alphabet, a form of government um, in which the city-states ruled themselves, and then the culture and innovations, they spread all throughout Mesopotamia. And then over time, this soil would deposit um, throughout the Gulf, and then today the coastline is hundreds of miles south of its location during um, the Sumerian civilization. And then lastly, we're gonna go to the bigger picture here of ancient Egypt altogether. 
And again, we're going to cover all this in great detail throughout this unit. Two units two and three are kind of combined together. So let's look through here. Ancient Egypt was called the gift of the Nile because the river was so important to life in the region. The Nile River is the longest in the world flowing north from the equator to the Mediterranean Sea. So you see there that it's unique and that it flows north. When you look at this, you would think, well, it's flowing down, um, flowing south. But of course, um, it, we know that the Nile flows north. The Nile's floodwaters deposited rich soil and created the fertile Nile Valley, the birthplace of Egyptian civilization. All right. So the fertile farmland still borders today's Nile. Reed and wooden boats carried merchants' goods along the river. They paddled north with the gently moving current. Let's climb on board and take a journey with them. Our first stop is at Abu Simbel, where the pharaoh Ramses II built a temple, complete with four 66-foot statues of himself. Pharaohs were considered to be living gods and built spectacular tombs and temples in honor of themselves. As we travel downstream, we come to the first cataract. A canal has been dug so that our boat can navigate around these rocky rapids and waterfalls. The Nile is home to many kinds of fish and other wildlife. Ancient Egyptians fished and hunted birds. Some even speared the dangerous hippopotamuses and crocodiles that lived on the river. During Egypt's peak, Thebes was the capital. Here, Queen Hatshepsut, the first woman pharaoh, had a temple built in her honor. It was carved out of the wall of a cliff. Queen Hatshepsut, we'll talk about her, the first female pharaoh. We'll, um, later in the unit, we'll spend quite a bit of time talking and discussing her. The Egyptians used irrigation to expand their farmlands. They grew fruits and vegetables and harvested wheat, which they ground into flour for bread. They also used fiber from flax plants to make linen cloth. After we float by Memphis, an old capital of Egypt, we pass the burial sites at Giza. Here sits the mighty Sphinx, an enormous stone creature with the face of an ancient pharaoh. So just to let you know, Egypt gets its own unit um, later in the year as well. But just to show you how this part of the world sort of all works together, I wanted you to see um, just how closely related everything is. Finally, we come to the end of the Nile, where it empties into the Mediterranean Sea. This triangular area at the mouth of the river is called a delta. Had our journey covered the entire length of the Nile, we would have traveled 4,160 miles. All right, so those are the three interactive maps I wanted you to see. And then when you are done, um, well, obviously you're done watching this because you're watching it, you're doing this with me, but when you were, uh, we, were, we, you, we were done with this, so you're going to come and you're going to see this fill-in-the-blank Fertile Crescent map. So um, on Google Classroom, is actually going to be titled Fill-in-the-blank Fertile Crescent Map. Um, you're going to have uh, three slides on here. You're going to have the actual map itself. You're going to have a word bank. So Red Sea, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Nile River, Tigris and Euphrates River, which is one combined term. Fertile Crescent, Mediterranean Sea, Phoenicia, Assyria, Persian Gulf, Syrian Desert, Black Sea, Caspian Sea. Um, then you're going to have these two maps to sort of go off of. Now, I could have spent all day putting um, places on here, um, but I didn't want to do that because you would um, you would have just been filling in a map for forever. So I just put some of the major places that really stood out, and um, I think you need to know from this for this unit. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at these two maps here and you're going to come back to your map up here and you're going to click next to the number and if you think right here is the Tigris and Euphrates you would type in Tigris and Euphrates obviously that is not the Tigris and Euphrates I was using that as an example but you're going to just click next to the numbers and you're going to type in where um, each one goes so that is how you're going to fill in the um, the map and then on Friday you will again have just a few questions to answer about the uh, maps, um, those interactive maps we just looked at, and then you will be done for the week. And um, believe it or not, some of you that uh, we will see next week in person. So 
Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Miss Atala or Miss V, and we will be happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you for watching.